Pastor Mike Todd of Transformation Church has had a series of actions and words that he has done and said that have generated quite a lot of criticism over the past few months and have left very concerning questions on the legitimacy of his message. From the alleged secular and demonic play that he had in this year's Easter service to the messy spit that he rubbed on his brother's face on stage to the many questionable Instagram posts that he has made over the past few months to most importantly the unfortunate misinterpretation of scripture that he has been accused of time and time and time again but now to somewhat conclude or complete this arc or whatever we have a different we have mike todd's perspective from the conversation he had with tim ross in the basement to some of transformation churches sunday services to multiple online platforms pastor mike todd has given his side and some behind the scenes of what has been happening over the past several months so what I am going to do in this video is review all of this in the shortest time possible in an effort to give an unbiased opinion of what I think Christians should learn from this Mike Todd situation because I think there are things to learn from all of this because the point of making this video is not to bash or attack one who is a great communicator by the way and a pastor with a big influence in the body of Christ bigger than most of us currently but to edify the body of Christ one that I think Pastor Mike Todd is a big part of. So instead of going through every clip, soundbite, and post available, we'll look at three key areas that Pastor Mike Todd has been heavily criticized on, and then we'll tie it up to his response, and most importantly, the scriptures. And these three things are his social media posts, his sermon theatrics, and his messages. And we'll start off with his Instagram post, because I believe before we look at the word, we have to look at the man behind the word and see how he conducts himself. So I want you to look at these four posts and tell me what you think about them. The first one is Pastor Mike Todd having his body hair removed by his wife. The second post is Pastor Mike Todd, for a lack of a better term, loving on his wife. The third post is Pastor Mike Todd twerking for his wife. And the fourth is Pastor Mike Todd on a podium preaching to thousands, potentially millions of people while wearing a t-shirt with a picture of his wife in a bathing suit printed on it. See how I keep saying his wife? See, what Pastor Mike Todd is doing is not objectively wrong. He is doing it with his wife. It's not a problem if you want to touch your wife's bum. It's not a problem if she's the one to wax you or something of the sort. It's not a problem if you want to see her in a bikini all day, every day. It's called loving on your wife. It's a commandment. That's not the problem. But for a minister of the gospel, the standards are a little bit higher as to what you can do with the liberty that you have. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians, all things are permissible for me, but not all things are beneficial. Paul, Paul who had the liberty to marry, who had the liberty to eat any food or drink, even meat offered to idols, chose to forfeit meat for the sake of his brothers so they may not fall. He chose to remain celibate for the sake of his ministry. It is not about the liberty that you have, it's about what you do with it. So that is Paul. Let us hear what Mike Todd has to say about it. Master the art, watch this, of fulfilling your calling in the midst of comments. I'm going to keep doing it. Somebody say, I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> Today, there'll be comments about the sermon. People will comment good things. People will comment bad things. They'll be mad because I had a, a, a picture of my wife on my shirt in a bathing suit. How a pastor going to get up there tempting everybody? But if you go into Forever 21 right now, your daughter has on a shirt with somebody they don't know within a bathing suit right now. And you, I love her and she wears bathing suits. <gasps> First ladies wear bathing suits? Oh my God. I'm so done with church people. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is comment on it. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Next week, we're going to Miami. We're going to be at VU conference. And I'm going to get comments. And I'm going to do what God called me to do. Master. So you're going to do what God has called you to do. That is good. But has God called you to do things that might cause your brethren to stumble? I mean, loving your wife is a commandment. And that is great. But it doesn't warrant you getting onto that podium with a t-shirt like that 
potentially in front of millions of listeners, most of whom, as far as sensuality is concerned, are crippled by the lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh. Especially for minister of the gospel, if it even causes one of your congregants to stumble and fall, I don't think you should be doing it. And speaking of things that we have the liberty to do but shouldn't, let us go to Simon Theatrics, where he has faced quite a lot of criticism, and surprisingly so, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with his practical demonstrations. I don't have a problem with the examples that he gives. I mean, Jesus Christ used parables, so I don't see how using tools that can enable people to further understand the gospel is a problem. Except if those demonstrations take away from the word rather than add to it. Except those demonstrations are secular. For example, take a look at what was happening in the Easter service. That's secular music. Secular music for the Easter service, I believe. Dragon, this is what you need to do. Step one, tie you a baddie. Okay. But step two, she gotta have a fatty. Hey. 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 Uh -oh. What is she doing? Friends, I don't have a fatty. Girl, Girl we keep telling you it's okay. Your little booty matter too, friend. Y'all oh, know they don't be discriminating. <laughs> To be honest, I think some of the criticisms given to this play were unwarranted. Like the ones that said, oh, it looked like the satanic ritual in the Grammys. I mean, if you're going to portray hell, then it better look like one. So yeah, I, I don't think I have an issue, despite <laughs> what you've seen here, um, with the production quality. However, at no one point does the preaching of the gospel of Christ, the gospel of his resurrection, require three ladies dressed in tight pants twerking on the podium or men rapping or dancing to secular songs. It doesn't matter how you look at it. Because then the question that we are left asking is, why did you do it? Was it all necessary? People will get out of that service, not talking about the beauty of the resurrection of Christ, but the drama, the controversy, the show, the church, the pastor. Let us hear what Pastor Mike Todd has to say as to why he had to do that ransom play as to why he had to do all those theatrics. Um, I became the pastor and I didn't know what a pastor did. And so I was meeting with a group of people and they was like, what should we do for Easter? I was like, I've never preached the Easter message. So I'm not going to start this year. We need to come up with an Easter play. And they was like, all right, let's do it. I said, but it can't be no whack, raggedy. Just, he got up. Like, it just cannot be that. Okay, y'all gonna act like I'm the only one that saw, like, oh, yay. That <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Wacky, raggedy, he got, uh, that's your, ex that's your excuse. Okay, I hope, I hope y'all, I hope all of you can understand that I'm, why I am restraining myself at the moment from, acting up and being angry. He got up is the reason why we are alive today. He got up is the reason why 
you have a church. He got up is the reason why we can boldly approach the throne of mercy and acquire our salvation and our forgiveness. He got up is the he got up is the bedrock of our Christianity. And I'm sorry if it's too wacky and too raggedy and too boring for you to show in a play. That is what got us to where we are. Why Why are you acting as if you do not understand the power behind the resurrection message? Why are you acting as if you do not understand the ghost? Why are you acting as if you've never preached an Easter message in your... Wait. I was like, I've never preached the Easter message. So I'm not going to start this year. Of course he hasn't. Of course he hasn't. Listen, the point is this. when when If months after the service... It's, it's six months by the time I'm recording. If months... After the Easter service, no one is talking about the beauty of the resurrection of Christ. No one is talking about the message. Everyone's talking about the drama, the theatrics, the pastor, the church. You're taking away from the message. You're taking away from the whole point of Easter. Because sometimes his messages are good. For example, in the, what's it called? The speed hit the fan moment. I believe that message was really nice. I believe it was concise, it was clear. Sometimes it gets messy. Christ wants to take certain things out of your life. That was a good message. That is very true, very biblical, very clear. But then when you go ahead and spit and gargle and do all those disgusting things and rub it on your, your brother's face, uh, oh, I just remembered how it looked like. Wow. <laughs> disgusting. When you do all that, all of a sudden, no one is focusing on the message anymore. You're taking away from the message using the very tools that should be enhancing the message. And by doing that, you take the glory away from the word of God and place it on your own efforts to try and enhance the word of God. And in doing so, you deny from your own congregants the miracle of having the word of God, Jesus Christ, reveal himself to those reading the word of God, to those hearing the word of God. Because the emphasis has never been on the theatrics. It has never been on the demonstrations. It has never even been on your efficacy as far as communication is concerned. Moses had a speech impediment. Jeremiah was too young. The disciples, most of them were illiterate. It's not about what we can do as, as human beings in as much as us doing them is not a bad thing. It's about the word of God revealing itself to those who hear it. Paul himself says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe, I did not come to you with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And later on, he goes on to say, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And I'm going to be wrong with this. When you lack the power of God to back up your preaching, to back up the word, and you have to rely on theatrics and demonstration to make sure that the service is not boring, then maybe the problem is in the congregants who are getting bored. Then maybe the problem is the message. And that being said, I think it's time we go to the last and final thing that most people have criticized Pastor Mike Todd on, and that is his message. For example, when you say this as a preacher, I'm about to drop some knowledge on you that, that, that everybody has to be able to receive. And this may be a shocking statement for some people, but people don't go to hell for sin. Jesus already paid for that. They go to hell for unbelief. God decided male and female. I, no, 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 I'm not, this is not a bad, I need y'all to hear my heart on this. This is not a bashing, this is not a, he, if I was there, maybe I would have told him, is there something in the middle you could do? Like kind of a, like a little maybe if somebody, well, I was born like this, I don't know how I feel, that I, I feel you and I wish that there was an option of other in the kingdom. What does that mean? And don't take this the wrong way. Part of the sermon was actually good when he talked about taking your views and your opinions and putting them under God. The way Pastor McDonald explained submission, 
is very good. Serving the kingdom is going to cost you your natural response. Man. Man. My wife made me mad. So I want to go talk to the girl at my job. My natural response is you treat me like that. I'm going to go do something that makes me feel better. In the kingdom, you have to put that response. Again, when you say stuff like this, it's okay to feel it. Nobody has ever gotten in trouble for feeling it. Oh God, oh God. I know this is too much. You, everybody say, I can feel it. I can't act on it. I'm okay for you to feel horny. Oh my God. Want to cheat on your wife? Want to cheat on your husband? By the Bible, while Jesus states that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has committed adultery with her, what are you saying? When Paul clearly condemns homosexuality and classifies it as a sin, what are you saying? Because it not only shows a worrying level of understanding and interpretation of scripture, but also poor scriptural exegesis. By that I mean a contextual, analytical, and accurate presentation of scripture. One that does not require you to add onto that scripture so that your preaching can make sense, but one that allows the scripture to speak to you, where you don't have to wrongly correlate one scripture and another so that your preaching can make sense. Like this other example, we see of my dog. About to share with you, I honestly have never heard before. I wake up every morning just as shocked as you are that I'm the pastor. And that's why we need to get light. Even in the beginning when there was void and nothing was in the earth, what was the first thing Jesus said in Genesis 1? Let there, oh, I feel this, be. Let the knowledge come. He said, let there be knowledge. Let there be a seeking. Let there be something that... You literally had to add to that scripture so that your preaching can make sense. When God said, let there be light, he did not say, let there be knowledge. The Hebrew word for knowledge and light are fundamentally two different words. When he said, let there be light, he said, let there be light. The only case for which your argument can make sense is the fact that knowledge does mean to illuminate. But you see how a good motivational inspirational message is based off the wrong scriptural interpretation and it is therefore based on exegesis adding on to scripture rather than exegesis allowing the scripture to reveal itself to you i'm sorry i'm using terms that some of you may not be uh, familiar with if you'd like to see more of the difference between exegesis and exegesis please look at this video link in the description below and out of that we are left with a congregation less motivated to delve into scripture and you're left with a congregation that is more leaning towards a motivational in the fields inspirational interpretation of a bible that they have a bible that they should be reading after all this pastor mike todd went into the basement and met tim ross where he broke down everything and gave more context to what was happening in the past few months and putting tim ross's controversies aside because he he does have a lot of controversies. Right under the f***ing verse that you... We don't make it rain on booty cheeks. We don't make it rain on strippers. That's how f***ing lazy we are now. Right. right. Like, that's bull Like, I, like... We only reverence one stripper. And that's the one that took off glory. It was a wholesome conversation. It was a wonderful podcast. One, I would actually encourage people to go and listen to it. Uh, it was very good. But it was good without the context. Because when you put the context, it, it lacks accountability. Now, I know the claim was that it wasn't intentional, but it seemed to me more of a promotion of his new book, Damaged But Not Destroyed, than it was an honest review of what had happened. It seemed like two guys sitting together, encouraging themselves in how right they were living and how every criticism was a persecution, a test, so to speak, to the service and the ministry that they were offering to God. Again, I'm not taking anything away from it. It was actually wholesome and very good with some very wonderful points, but that was without context. You put in the context and honestly, you see how much of an echo chamber these people are in. 
And the best thing I can do other than make the video that I've made is pray for Mike Todd and urge all of you to pray for Mike Todd. Pray that he finds his way back. Pray that he may grow to the level of his influence. Pray that he may sit down and hear the authentic voice of God. You know what? Let's let's pray for Mike Todd. <sighs> Father Mike, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to bless you and I want to thank you for Pastor Mike Todd. I want to thank you for the position that you've put him for such a time as this. For how you're impacting his life and using him, Abba Father, to bring many Abba Father close to you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. But especially in this moment when he's seeking to relaunch Abba Father, his position in you, O oh Lord, we ask that he may enable him to sit down and listen to you. That he may help him to find his way back to what is authentic, O oh Lord, to what is true, to what you really called him to do, oh Father. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. But you may use him to communicate the right message of our Father, correct interpretations of Scripture, O oh Lord, that no one under his massive influence may go astray. Father, and if I have said anything, O oh Lord, that is undeserving and becoming from an ill-intentioned heart, O oh Lord, I ask that you may forgive me, I ask that you may cleanse me, I ask that you may correct me. That all in all, you may use me, you may use Pastor Mike Todd, you may use everyone who's watching this video, to glorify your holy name and to bring honor, O oh Lord, to you, Jesus, to edify the church until the point where it becomes a bride without spot or wrinkle. I worship you, O oh God, and I bless your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. With that, that is all I have for you guys today. Would you kindly like and share the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't? Otherwise, my name is Rekin Moenda and this is Rekin Christian. I'll see you on the next one.